Hi, I'm Randy Simmons for today's segment on Ion Arts. I have uh, several special guests with me today, and I'm going to start out with uh, Paul Aho, the director for the Paducah School of Art, and I have a couple of uh, extra visitors that are students of ours, Andy Eller and Shannon Simmons, who are uh, a couple of this year's award winners from the uh, student exhibition. Uh, but first, I'm going to start out with Paul and, and talk with Paul about what's happening at the Paducah School of Art. Hey, Randy. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for being on. Yeah, that's great. Uh, well, um, you're in the middle of it, so you know a lot of what's going on over there, but there's a lot of people out there who don't know. And I think the, the, certainly the biggest and most newsworthy things that are going on in the school are, are ongoing campus expansions. So what we have done this year is um, we have completed the renovations to uh, what has historically been known as Madison Hall in Lower Town, and we've been able to move our ceramics and our jewelry program, or actually move the ceramics program out of our established location right. at 409 Broadway in downtown. Um, into new built-for-purpose spaces in Madison Hall and to uh, add a new program in jewelry and um, metal smithing to our course offerings for students in the community. So that's really um, the, the big news that's right behind us. We opened that new building in January. Uh, we have a good number of new students taking the metals program and um, we're looking to expanding our programming at both of those areas in the coming year. It sounds like we have a lot going on. on we, we, we have a lot going on, and we certainly have ambitions for a lot more t to take place in these new spaces. So the second thing that's big and new for us as well is that we're just beginning construction on a new 7,000 square foot sculpture building and sculpture facility on the property mm -hmm. at Madison Hall. So it will be an adjacent building and will make uh, what we're considering phase two of a three-phase um, campus expansion to complete our vision for, at least our immediate vision for the scope of our operations for the Paducah School of Art. And an interesting uh, uh, side note to all that as well, since uh, Cermax has moved out, there's actually more room for painting in 2D Absolutely. And drawing classes. Right. So, to, to you know, we don't, um, want to leave those students out of our view and so we've made some improvements at 409 on behalf of those programs as well so we've expanded um, we've, it's allowed us basically to create separate spaces or more distinctly purposeful spaces for the drawing program and the painting program and I'm sure we'll have the numbers uh, as well the students and we do our recruiting and so forth and yeah well we're certainly looking at the high school um, high schools in the region. We know that we serve 11 different high schools and we'll be expanding our recruitment activities into those schools and um, again I like to say the two things that make an art school functional are faculty and facilities. Right. We have the faculty in place, we have good people um, teaching for us, actually really good people teaching for us um, and with the expansion of this new sculpture program that would, that's about a 13 month process um, starting almost immediately. There's a construction trailer on the property at the moment so uh, we will add a full time sculpture professor in that capacity as well and sort of round things up you know, in a sensible sort of forward moving right. fashion. Another recruiting tool also um, is the, the summer workshop program with the, for the high schools. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, sure. That's, um, that's a really sort of exciting thing to be a part of as well. Um, we have for several years time been running something we call the pre-college summer art program and it's basically a program that's engineered to simulate the college experience for high school students so ninth graders upwards to seniors have the opportunity to study um, this year we've expanded it to a two-week program uh, it will encompass um, activities like traditional college classes in painting in ceramics in jewelry making and in digital photography well, wow, that's quite a bit. So, yeah. so we, um, last year we had a full crowd of 16 students, and this year we certainly hope to do that. I'd like to see that program expand more into the future. And uh, again, I think as we increase our uh, draw by expanding our facilities, we'll have an easier and easier time of, of that. Mm -hmm. Right, and, uh, and, and for me this all leads up to, to our annual student show that, that we do. Uh, for me, I think of it as like, a, like our greatest hits package. For, for the calendar year. Um, we certainly want students who are, who are interested in taking our courses is to see the students' works that have uh, come out of our programming. Yeah, no, well, that's an exciting moment for any art school, of course. I mean, you have two sort of big events of the year. You have your faculty show and you have your student show, but it's really your student show is at the right. core of the, the heart of the matter, right? Because not only does it 
um, speak to the quality of the work that our students are capable of producing, but it also speaks to the quality of the instruction that they get and um, adds credibility and viability to um, the notion of studying with the people that we have in place, uh, basically um, mm -hmm. personnel resources, right? Right. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, yeah, we've just had the pleasure of opening that exhibition, and I know you're going to speak a bit about that later in the program. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Well, I was really excited to get a, a new category into our uh, exhibition. Mm -hmm. So we, jewelry. Yeah, well, and, and to think about the learning curve in terms of jewelry making is pretty extensive. You start out learning pretty basic stuff. You got to learn how to, to rivet and join metal. You got to learn how to use a saw. And the notion that after a 16 week of program, we have work of the caliber that we see on display here is, mm -hmm. um, speaks well for, again, not only the studios that we've equipped, but the quality of the instruction that Sarah Renshaw has been able to bring to that activity. That's great. It was good to have Sarah Renshaw aboard. Yeah, she's terrific. Yeah. And so when, when we're doing the, the student show, what kind of prep work do the students do? In addition to making the work, uh, what kind of prep work do they do to get ready for the show? Well, I mean, as you know, it's all part of professional practices for artists, right? right? So this whole notion of students exhibiting um, has larger value than just for a showcase for the school. Right. It has, you know, sort of internal um, rewards for the artists themselves in terms of uh, giving them experience um, preparing their work, getting it matted and framed, and making decisions about what to show and how to, to do that. And right. um, in the juror statement, um, Kerry Gibbs, who was the, this year's juror, makes mention of that, the importance of presentation. And we all know, as practicing artists, that presentation is like the final creative process. Absolutely. Yeah, this year's juror was Kerry Gibbs. From, uh, she's the director for the Schrode Arts Center. Uh, which is at Cedarhurst Center for the Arts in uh, Mount Vernon. And she had some really nice things to say about the show in her juror statement. Um, she uh, said that she was really impressed by the level of quality and the artistic skill present in the exhibit. And there were some things, that, some key notes that she talked about as well that uh, you've mentioned too. And it's a technical execution, um, as well as the emotional expression and the presentation. Uh, and so she's been really quite impressed with mm -hmm. all three of those factors as she made her decision to pick the best piece in, in each category. Um, how did you guys find her and choose her as the, uh, as the juror for this year's show? Um, well, sort of indirectly, I suppose. Um, Rusty Freeman, the director, of the, our visual arts director for Cedarhurst, had made a visit to um, Paducah a year and a half or so ago, and so we uh, had the opportunity to meet him. And um, a local artist, Craig Rhodes, had had an exhibition right. at the Schrode Center, and um, we had visited to hear his gallery talk and had the opportunity to meet her there. And um, so, you know, just making connections. Connect, 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 right? Uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and another nice thing about having her in, or even outside people, is that these are unbiased uh, artists coming in and or directors during yeah, the show, right. mm -hmm. so they're not really partial mm -hmm. to, and, to anybody. And, you know, people that are professional. I think they're, it sort of incentivizes an exhibition when you get to put your work in front of somebody who is in the industry outside of the scope of being a practicing artist. Right. right? You know, there seems to be more. Um, quote unquote opportunity involved in getting your work in front right. of a curator or a director or a gallerist. And, yeah, and th the other side of that coin, of course, is that some artists would prefer that another artist be making judgments about their right. work. But um, I think most see it as a means of, um, again, moving their careers one direction or another. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of help this year with the uh, student show and getting installed, and, and there was a lot of teamwork okay. coming together. Yeah, I, well, I, again, that comes together in the two and a half days. That's pretty remarkable that right. we can make that happen. So. Right. The survival skills class mm -hmm. helped out. Um, I'm sure the art club was, was mm -hmm. a little part. Well, actually, there's some of those uh, folks in my survival skills yeah, class, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a student-run show. And of course, we lost without having Liz there to help us uh, mm -hmm. uh, pull the strings yeah. at getting that together. Um, so what's different about this year's show than, than previous years? Well, I, th I think in terms of the quantity of work, it seems reasonably consistent. But I think that the, uh, what we see and what speaks well for the school and the students is that the quality of the work is, it just seems to get better and better with every passing year, right? So that the overall quality of the exhibition seems to be evening out. I mean, we've always had really strong works in the mix, right? Like Karen right. Dodds is like a really skilled painter, right? And so, you know, you would see her work and, Karen Dodson, sorry, and un 
say, well, there's a, obviously a very, very talented person in the mix here, but when you look at the show as, as a whole at this point, you can kind of just scan that room and say, you know, for a, a two-year community right. college, this is really a great show. There's a lot of really good work here. Right. And if anybody misses the uh, student show this year, they can always go online to our Facebook presence as well. And yes, and, and, and uh, as we that. continue to develop um, a web presence, uh, we'll certainly have representations on that of student work and as well as the other exhibition programming that we do. There are national invitationals and ceramics and jewelry and metals and photography. Right. So there'll be an archive of those things. Um, you know, in, in terms of representing the activities of the school, but also as a resource for people who are out there looking for information and content. All right, and we have a new website that's going up? Uh, we do. We're working at the moment with uh, Nathan Brown to launch a new website. It's uh, Paducah School of Art and Design dot org. And you'll notice perhaps that we've added the and design to our moniker, so that's the right. name of the art school will be expanded to um, in compass our absorbing or adopting the design programs, the technical program as it stands at the moment from the community college. So we're going to, um, our vision of course is most art right. schools is to embrace graphic design and multimedia and these sort of things as we move forward and uh, we're sort of taking the leap and doing that in the coming fall term. So we're going to sort of rebrand ourselves in small measure. We've got a new logo on the horizon and a new website and uh, lots of new and exciting things to look forward to in the future for Paducah School of Art and Design. Wow, that sounds great. I'm just imagining next year's student show, you know, or, or even a few years to come, how large the show's mm -hmm. going to be. Mm -hmm. It's going to be and absolutely well, huge. You, you mentioned earlier adding another category. Well, we'll certainly be adding the design category for next year's show as well. Right? Wow. Mm -hmm. With all these innovations, it sounds wonderful. And uh, um, we'll, have, we'll be doing the show again next year, I'm sure. I, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, actually bring on two more guests after this short break, uh, Andy Eller and Shannon Simmons, and they're a couple of winners of ours from this year's student show. And I'll have them to talk briefly about their work, and uh, we'll see some samples of that as well. Thanks, Paul, for being on the show. You're welcome. Appreciate Thank it. you, Randy. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Hi. I'm back with a couple of students, student winners, actually, from uh, this year's student show. I have Andy Eller with me and Shandon Simmons. Uh, I'll, I'll start with, uh, with Andy because Andy took home the most awards. Uh, Andy was a winner of uh, this year's President's Choice Award. Uh, you also won in photography. Yes. And you also yeah. won in 3D uh, design. In 3D design. Yes. So, so, Mr. Moneybags, uh, <laughs> you got so much money, what are you going to do with all the prize winnings? Use it for personal stuff. Maybe buy art supplies or yeah, sure. Fantastic. Camera upgrade, uh, software upgrade. Great. That's feasible. So you've already got a pigeonhole where you're gonna where you're gonna put the money at. Yeah, well. You know, I haven't really thought about that too much. Um, for me, it was, I mean, it was so unexpected. It was overwhelming. Um, I remember, you know, Paul calling out my name. You know, the second time, and after that, it was all like white noise. <laughs> right. Because I, I was just overwhelmed. Right. Well, and, and uh, you've won more than anybody has previously won. Hmm. Didn't know that. Uh, it was just good to be recognized. Um, you know, senior year, I put a lot of effort into my work. Right. And I've always been so and jealous, I think, of the work that I see going on around me. Mm -hmm. um, I've taken a lot of inspiration from it, but still. I see students like Shandon, for example, drawing in a way that I know I never will. But um, looking at the sculpture that Evita won with, the, the little brooch, um, her right. bust, um, the sculpture that Gail did, just in, anything like that, it just, it really just makes me feel good to see that going on and to be part of it. Well, it's good to hear those, those kinds of comments, that inspiration from, from other students as, as well. Uh, you know, it's more than just learning from the instructor. I do a lot of shoulder surfing. Yeah. 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 Well, you're a good student, too. I've, yeah. I've had you for a lot of classes. So Thanks. I definitely think you're, you're a good student. So uh, uh, you're, you're about ready to finish up. You're graduating this time? That's correct. And it's really weird. Um, when I started off here, uh, my goal was just to take a couple of photography classes trying to improve my creative and technical skills. And in that first semester, when I sat down and started uh, listening to Paul, I was thinking, this guy knows what he's talking about. I knew immediately I would be back for digital too. 
But um, and then I, I started adding classes, uh, things that I thought would help me mm -hmm. with photography, two-dimensional design, art history. You know, those are other places where I've gotten uh, my inspiration from. And I think actually to backtrack a little bit, when I first thought about going to school here, I sat down and talked to Harvey Sadow. Mm -hmm. It was just a whimsy. I was driving around downtown Paducah. I'd heard so much about the Paducah School of Art which I think at that time had only been open maybe two or three years. And um, I just stopped in to see what y'all had to offer. And after 10 minutes with Harvey, you know, he had me convinced I should go to school here. Wow, so all from just stopping in on, on yeah, a on whim. whim and, and, but you've already got a degree. Correct, um, a bachelor degree in, in forestry from Clemson University. 1986. <laughs> well, that's a huge jump going from it that is. to, to yeah. art. It is. Um, and this, you know, wasn't my intent to graduate from Paducah School of Art, but like I say, once I started, it just kept building. I looked at the classes, said this will help. I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm learning. And I love to learn. So here I am. Well, and one of your photos was the overall winning piece. Um, I think we can throw that up on the monitor. Okay. Can you tell us about the winning piece? Sure. Um, it's a water reflection, which I don't think a lot of people would get on their first read of the image. Um, and it's part of a body of work I'm, I'm doing where I try to abstract from nature. And I, I've, choos I've chosen water reflections because of their brilliance, their luminosity. Um, in this one, I think all the formal elements came together. Right. Color, tone, shape, line, um, and it's straight out of the camera, believe it or not. There's, you know, minimal adjustments in camera raw. Wow. Th that's really nice to hear, too, because I see a lot of over-processed things, right. but you're just relying strictly on what you saw and, you know, in-camera editing. And it's very, very difficult to do something like that. I think a lot of people, when they think about water reflections, they think about the mirror image, like it's a perfect reverse of what you're seeing up on the land. Mm -hmm. But I try to break it down. I start working around the edges, um, maybe where there's a little bit of um, current, uh, some wind, riffles, things like that. Um, just basically trying to capture an abstract. And this one, I think, it, it looks painterly. It does. It reminds me of like a, maybe a Pollock, only with uh, right. with uh, with water. Right. So th and this piece is kind of large too. It's a, a, what you normally it's not, it's not a small print. Correct. It's uh, the image is 23 by 23. Uh, the final frame size I think is a little over 30. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's gallery size. Right. Well, it'll look nice in Dr. Vesey's office or wherever <laughs> she decides to, right. to, to put the piece. Right. So a after, after you graduate, what's, uh, what's going to happen? Well, I don't have any immediate plans, but I think um, I'm definitely going to continue doing the kind of work I'm doing. It's just in what context. Um, I'm, not, I'm uncertain about that right now. Um, I will continue to study art, be an artist at large. I would like to go on for an advanced degree, but um, right now that's kind of off in the future a little bit. Right. Well, I'll keep tabs on you. Okay. Okay. We're Facebook I'll keep friends, you posted. So. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Great. And Shandon Simmons is our winner of the drawing award this year. And uh, very fine drawing. Uh, it's certainly okay. one of my favorites of yours. Uh, you, you actually had uh, more than one drawing in there, and, and I think any of them could have won. They were all really good quality work. So uh, t tell us about your time here at the School of Art. Rather. Uh, rigorous and very long but you know everybody has to work at their own pace and I've had you know sort of typical circumstances you know full-time job and things like that so kind of having to you know plan around all of that to still still be able to create art even with classes that aren't directly towards making studio artwork, right. you know, more so this semester has been learning, you know, about how to, you know, market your art and get it out there in as far as the media goes, like your website and, you know, just, just presenting yourself in a sort of a professional manner and also mixing paint and making swatches with Balan sure. over and over again, yeah. color theory. But, you know, with all that said, you, you still have to have these things, but then 
you have to take time to uh, have some have some artwork to submit, you know. And if you if you really if you really want to do it, you have to do it on your own time, and you don't have to you can't rely solely on projects you're assigned. And that's a big thing that I've come to realize at the school. But as as far as the school goes, it's probably been one of the most beneficial things for me as an artist and growing as an artist because it gave me a refuge and a place to be surrounded by other artists right. and that's one of the best best influence influences that you can get is being around other artists and hearing the conversation of it and really just being in the spirit of creating art and you really get a lot of that, even from your instructors too. It's a very calm, you know, kind of a uh, just a group of friends. Uh, it's a very close knit community at the school, and that's probably my favorite thing about it. And I would like to, to be able to uh, have more availability to spend more time at the school and utilize the uh, resources there. And it's. It's, it's been a ride, and it's, it's been nothing but growth since the day that I stepped foot in there. And, right. and I've seen your portfolio grow from day one. You've had me for drawing one. Yeah. And, and live drawing, and hopefully you'll continue with, uh, with drawing too. But I've seen your portfolio and your technical skills, and uh, I think what's impressed me quite a bit is uh, the aesthetics behind it, your ideas, your concepts. and. And I've seen, and actually it goes for Andy as well, uh, that both your all's work has, has grown aesthetically as well as, as technically. I so agree. It's, it's nice to see that. Um, I, was, I was telling Shannon before the show that I really liked uh, the piece that he won with, Best of Show Drawing, where I guess you're drawing yourself, yeah. and, and the title is Make Yourself. Right. I think we can put that up on the screen. Yeah. That, that's a really nice drawing. That came out of life drawing class from, yeah. from last semester. And you like to work with the self-portrait, and if, if it's like if it's like for me, it's hard to find models. So you yeah, doing that's that's been my biggest problem so far, uh, which is why I, I get a little nervous and sort of un, uneasy about entering some of my pieces, is because most of them do have myself in them, and the, there's I mean there's two pretty solid reasons. I mean, one of the primary reason is because uh, the lack of models, you know, I don't know very many people that are willing to either sit down and let me draw them or even let me take a photograph of them, you know, and the only other person I've really had available is my own brother, and he's in another art piece of mine uh, called uh, The Family Fridge, and you can't even tell it's him. Yeah. It doesn't show his face. Actually, it just, I thought it that looks was like, you. <laughs> it looks like me again. Yeah, see, and everybody else thought it was, thought it was me. So, kind of, it didn't really do much to change models right. for that piece. But I think of now, you know, I've shaved off some obstacles and I've got more availability and uh, more availability and liberty to have models and have them to uh, take my photographs and be the, uh, be the subject in, in my art pieces. Right. And so you're, you're a little bit further away from graduation. Uh, yeah. but do, are you thinking ahead of you know, what's going to happen after you leave the School of Art? Um, I'll, probably, I'll probably just get a part-time job at McDonald's. And uh, I'd, Probably I might quit. My fingers, my fingers really hurt. <laughs> You've worked my hands to the bone, Randy. And McDonald's <laughs> has good benefits. I'm, I'm proud of what that, I heard. By the way. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah, I just I got a couple friends that have been through McDonald's part-time jobs. Nah, seriously, I, I, I'm definitely going to keep pursuing art and uh, experimenting with new uh, mediums. I've got a a new piece going right now that's actually much larger than my normal size charcoal drawings and experimenting with different surfaces too and that's something I've gained a lot of inspiration from visiting uh, with the survival skills class, visiting uh, different artists locally 
right. and seeing the kind of work that they do it has been extremely inspiring and just whenever you get whenever you get this kind of experience under your belt you want to apply it and that's immediately what I wanted to do so I'm working with acrylic and a large piece of plexiglass right now and I will not be in that piece <laughs> so I'm pretty excited about this one. So. Yeah, great. Well, it, it sounds like you, you need to take drawing too, because we do a lot of experimentation work in there. So I'll be looking forward to. Uh, I'll be. I'll be there. To, to have you in the <laughs> class. So, um, uh, any, any final words from you guys on, on winning the the show, the awards, or anything on on the School of Art in general? Oh, I love the School of Art. It's it's just been great here. Um, when Shane was talking earlier, I was thinking about the uh, supportive environment, the way we do our critiques, um, even when someone's delivering a criticism, it's done in such a way that you, you, know, you aren't offended or it's good to hear that. you don't recoil in horror or anything like that. Right. No one's left in tears yet. Right. So when he talked about it being a place of refuge, I, I related to that because right, that's what it's been for me. It's, um, it's amazing just the things that you're exposed to, the art, the ideas, things that maybe aren't circulating out in the, in the broader world. Definitely a refuge. Right. I it's, agree. It's nice, nice to hear that. Yeah. And also, in, you know, tying into the refuge aspect of it, just really we as the students there owe a lot to our instructors and the reason I say that is because you know, we learn a lot from them, but also they care, and that's the biggest, th that's the biggest thing that mm -hmm. a lot of students don't get, even, you know, in high school or any classroom, whatever your major is, it doesn't matter. If you're a student, you need a teacher that cares, and whenever you get that, it motivates you to be, you know, a better student, and at least apply yourself or uh, apply what you can you know apply the best that you can and the the instructors have really shown you know companionship with their students and you know really care a lot about their work and helping them blossom as an artist you know that's good that's never good know what's going to happen well, we'll be looking for fame, uh, hopefully fortune, <laughs> but but definitely fame from from the both of you guys uh, as well. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming on board and yeah, talking thanks with for us having the winners. And uh, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time on Ion Arts.